Well, hi everyone and welcome back to Waterhouse Hall. So today we're going to do a few of the smaller, almost ancillary parts, um, basically getting them onto, onto the engine, getting them onto the, the head or the block, wherever they go. So there's things like the uh, Welsh plugs, the, uh, the core plugs as some people call them, a um, couple of nuts and bolts that are used to kind of seal the oil channels, we'll, we'll show you that. Um, and a few plates to seal off the back of the uh, the, the cylinder head as well. Um, and hopefully we'll also get on to um, installing the oil filter housing, as in the, the mounting point for that. i uh, show you how that goes on. And generally just basically trying to finish off this engine um, before we, we move to Oh, basically onto the flywheel and the clutch and all of that and then eventually um, putting it back on the tractor. Um, so it's a little bit of a, a few bitsy bits if you want to think of it that way. Um, Oscar's not with me today sadly. Um, this is a, it's actually Friday. Um, I've had uh, the, or have lucky enough to have a day off of work and I thought I'd, I'd crack on with this video. Um, so he's sadly doing uh, his schooling uh, up at the house but um, uh, so anyway, sadly you've only got me today. Um, there's a couple of uh, angler parts that we're going to be using in this video and obviously I'll take you through each of those, in particular the core plugs, a few gaskets, that kind of thing. Um, but I'll, I'll, I'll talk you through each one as we go. Um, so yeah, I hope you found this interesting and um, let's get on with it. Just a quick word about our sponsors, Anglo AgriParts. Uh, Anglo AgriParts are based in Hampshire, uh, here in the UK. Uh, and they provide um, replacement parts for a whole range of makes of tractors. Um, their parts are very often used by OEMs, um, so you can see that well, what that means is that the quality is, is up to spec um, and it's you know, according to the original manufacturers. Uh, as most of you who have been watching the channel will know, Anglo have been supporting us for quite a few years. Uh, sorry, for quite a few months, just over a year now. Um, and they have provided all of the parts for the restoration of this tractor that they carry. Um, obviously there are inevitably some parts that they don't carry and of course we then, we then source those um, elsewhere. But Anglo have been very generous and provided pretty much every part that we've needed. Um, in particular, the, for the engine restoration, um, they, you know, they obviously gave us the full engine uh, restore kit um, along the, you know, which basically included the, the pistons, the sleeves, all of the um, gaskets that we required, seals, core plugs, etc, etc. They provided the new and the replacement crankshaft, um, they provided the replacement clutch which we'll be installing in a future video. Um, so really I just wanted to give a shout out to them. Um, Obviously there are many people out there who provide tractor parts um, and, and spare parts for your tractor. Anglo AgriParts uh, have, we, we decided or we agreed to partner with them because they are a family business and of course we as a family are uh, running this channel. Uh, as, as you will have seen, Oscar and I in particular we work um, on, this tr on this tractor and on this restoration as much as possible uh, together. Um, and, and yeah, essentially this is a family channel and uh, uh, Anglo are a family company and so there's a, a close synergy between, between the two uh, of us um, and that's why we have enjoyed their partnership um, over the last 14-15 months. So yeah, look, uh, you know, if you, if you are looking for parts to your tractor, I'd obviously encourage you to, to visit their website, give them a call, um, they're always willing to talk, always willing to help. Um, and of course if you feel that you know you want to support somebody else that's absolutely fine but we certainly appreciate the support the, the support that they give us and of course we would appreciate you at least giving them a shout um, and seeing how they might be able to help right that's enough on the uh, advertisement um, let's move on to the parts that we're going to be using uh, and the bits, the, the components that we're going to be installing in this next part of the video. Okay, so let's have a quick talk about this. So, what we've got here is the blanking plate for the back of the cylinder head. We've also got a blanking uh, a bolt that goes in there. 
We've got the 10 studs that go, um, which basically are for the manifold or manifolds. Um, and then we've also got three blanking bolts that go in, they basically screw into the, it's essentially the oil channel um, on the bottom left of the engine or on, on, of the block. Um, and they literally just blank off the, the channel. Um, same, same with this one here. Um, but let's first talk about this blanking plate for the back of the cylinder head. You can see that this one is quite pitted. Um, it's basically you've got coolant running around um, this plate all the time and it does get uh, quite heavily corroded. Um, this one is bad but it's not unsavable. Um, now I know some people have put uh, have used something like JB Weld and they've used that to basically fill in these pittings um, and then sanded it nice and smooth again. I could do that. Um, the other option is basically to replace this with a blank or rather a flat plate. Um, and a lot of people have done that quite successfully. It doesn't seem to uh, it doesn't seem to harm the engine in any way. This dishing that you've got here uh, doesn't seem to to make any difference. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically just replace this as is. I'm going to use some aviation cement around the outside. As far as I can tell, there is no gasket for this, but I imagine it needs some kind of seal. Um, so we're going to use some aviation cement. We're going to pop this on. Um, we just got two new washers for the for the bolts, um, and we're going to leave it like that and see how we go. Um, when we run this engine and this tractor, we will have a high quality coolant in uh, coolant additive in in the in the engine. We'll be using distilled water. Um, and so we shouldn't see as much corrosion going on as a result and I'm hoping that that will allow this plate basically to to work for a, a few more years um, essentially um, yeah look I think that's probably it um, let's get on with it and we'll I'll talk you I'll show you through each each bit as we go okay so we're at the back of the cylinder head now you'll see there's also a Welsh plug that should be going in here. Um, I thought I had that, but it, it, uh, going through uh, all the parts that we've got, I couldn't. I wasn't able to to find it. So I'm going to have to order that one. Um, but this is basically where that blanking plate goes. Now you'll see you've got this kind of bronze, brass, copper. I think it's bronze. Um, I don't know what's called. It's like a channel, basically, and obviously that dishing sits sits on top of this. So Essentially, the coolant can come in here and out there, or in here and out there, so basically can run around that. I'm not really sure what the purpose of that is, but as I say, many people, as far as I know, um, or I've certainly heard about, have just put a flat plate over here to seal that off um, with no adverse effect whatsoever. So, yeah, so we're going to start with that. This is where that other uh, blanking, or the first, that, that individual blanking bolt goes um, in there. So we pop that in with a new copper washer. That's obviously straightforward. Um, but yeah, essentially that's the job that we're doing uh, first. Okay, so as you can see, I've put um, some of that aviation cement on there. Um, I, I don't see any point putting it in the dish because it's not going to harden, um, I don't believe, unless it's under pressure. So um, that will then obviously just mix with the coolant, which we don't necessarily want. Right, so we'll pop that on. I haven't got enough hands here today. Okay, again, I don't think this needs to be incredibly tight. Um, that sealant will seal it nicely, and um, yeah, there we go. Now, for this blanking bolt, um, so this came with there's a copper washer on it um, originally. That copper washer is actually quite thick. Um, this replacing one is quite a bit thinner, probably about, I'd say, almost half as thin. I'm hoping that that's not going to make any difference. Um, if it starts to leak, what we might do is put a 
put a second washer on and possibly even put some sealant on there but I don't believe there's going to be any major pressure in there so we'll just tighten that down to compress the copper washer and I believe that that will be will be good enough it's on a bit of a strange angle but um, yeah maybe I should have had a ring spanner or a socket to tighten that but that, that'll, that'll work Right, let's move on to the blanking bolts on the oil pressure channel. Okay, so what we've got, we're around the, basically the left hand side of the, the engine. This is where your oil filler goes, this is your distributor obviously. If I'm not mistaken, I think the coil bolts on there as well. And then this is your oil filter. Now, what you've got is the, this channel here is basically, inside is your oil. Um, which is generated, oil pressure is generated by the oil pump um, and it's distributed through that channel and then up through various channels to parts of the engine and as I understand it or uh, as I uh, imagine these three holes had to be drilled at some point in order to create channels on essentially the other side of this pipe um, and of course now we just need to blank them off um, so you have these three blanking bolts um, that basically just screw in there and they just sit there. That, that's pretty much all that they do. Underneath here you've also got a, an opening uh, which is where your oil pressure gauge is um, connected. So the pipe, the capillary pipe that comes from the oil pressure gauge um, uh, connects to this and that, that then is how your oil pressure is, is measured. So it's basically measured pretty much immediately after the pump. Um, anyway, so again, it's exactly the same. These have a, a copper uh, washer on them. I'm gonna zoom in in a minute, but these have a copper washer on them, and I'm just gonna replace those and then pop those in, and that'll be the job done. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's pretty straightforward. I've got three new washers for the bolts, and we'll just... Um, pop those in there. Sorry about the light, this side of the engine is not particularly well lit. I am, uh, I tried to put a, an extra light in there but it might be creating shadows. Well this is really straightforward um, and simple. I'm really just doing this for interest rather than anything else. There we go, so we can pop that one in. There we go. So that's those three done. So we move on to the um, manifold studs now. You can actually see the engine number. Hopefully, I think you can see it in the in the uh, on the camera there. Oh no. Let's uh, just move you up a bit. Zoom in a bit more. So we just see the, the engine number stamped in there. Um, so this one is S171492E, I believe. Now the interesting thing about this tractor, we don't have the serial number for the tractor. The um, the, pl the brass or copper, the brass plate where the um, serial number should be is is missing, sadly, off the dash. The only thing we can go by is the. Um, well, you've got the date of casting for the block there, which is 28651, and then of course we've got the engine number, and that's unfortunately all that we've got. But um, yeah, anyway, let's um, let's move on. Okay, we're just around the other side of the engine now, and we're just going to put the um, manifold studs in. Now on the stud you have um, 
if you have a look you've got a short threaded side and a long threaded side the short threaded side goes into the head and the long side is where the bolt goes on um, so hopefully that's reasonably understandable well more importantly obvious um, so what we're going to do we're going to pop a little bit of um, Loctite onto the thread and then we're going to screw those in We will be using a thread a uh, sorry a stud extractor to um, screw these in um, and that's because I Don't have any nuts that will go on here other than the original uh, manifold nuts, but they are too long to for you to get two nuts on to for us to for me to be able to use the two nut method Now we don't have to go crazy with these, the Loctite will, will hold them, keep them in and uh, in any case this will tighten up as, uh, you know, well if there's any more for it to tighten it will tighten up as we tighten the manifold bolts and to be fair manifold bolts do not need to be incredibly tight um, the gasket does a good job of sealing assuming you've got a good gasket and um, Anyway, there's not a huge amount of pressure there. I mean, obviously you've got a bit of exhaust pressure and you certainly don't want your um, intake manifold to be leaking. But as I say, the, um, the gasket tends to do a pretty good job. So they don't have to be manically tight anyway. Okay. These ones at the bottom are a little bit more uh, difficult because the, the 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 tool catches on this lip in the in the block. But uh, anyway, we'll just have to do it bit by bit. Right, I won't film the other side, uh, basically it's exactly the same thing again, but there you can see we've now got the um, studs in. I will just um, wipe off the, the Loctite. Make sure that we don't have any way with Loctite anywhere. You can use um, a little bit of petrol on your rag for Loctite that works really well but if you get it when it's still nice and wet like this then it generally will wipe up easily anyway. There we go. Right so those manifold studs are ready to ready to go and uh, ready to put the manifolds um, back on which we'll only do later but um, yeah, they, they're ready to go. Okay, the next job is to reinstall the oil filler. Now this has a, an interesting cap. 
which has a spring-loaded uh, mechanism which allows the cap to well first of all the cap not to get lost but also it kind of clicks over the side which is pretty cool um, so it's out of the way when you're trying to fill um, but basically there's a there's a gasket there which comes in the bottom gasket set um, as part of the um, engine kit the bottom gasket kits part number is A43497 and I'll just briefly show you that or at least what we've got left, left of it so there it is there and as you can see we've got a few gaskets left there not many and um, that's the that's the set coming back to the filler cap uh, obviously with a it's a very basic uh, washer sorry gasket we will put a little bit of grease on that just to um, in, just in case we need to take it off again I don't think we will but nevertheless we will see which way it fits best it doesn't seem to matter um, got three new spring washers on there and I'll quickly show you how we put the put the cap on Okay, so hopefully you can see that clearly. Um, got a pair of pliers here. This is quite a strong spring, so you do need to be careful. But basically, that's it, right? Um, and now what happens is when you, when this is on the engine, and you finish filling, you, oh, this doesn't work now. You basically pull that, and it pulls and holds that cap on. And then when you want to put oil in you basically pull it down and it clicks over and allows you to fill quite comfortably right so let's get that on okay I've got my trusty pot of grease here and all I'm going to do is coat that gasket in grease all the way around go and then that can go on the grease holds it in place nicely for us and we can get that cover on now just get a rag okay so there's our filler I'll just pop that in pop that one in first You'll notice, uh, or you may notice, I've also just popped the old spark plugs back in just to keep the engine closed up um, as best I can. I've only, I've only just screwed them in, I've not tightened them at all. In fact, they're not even screwed all the way in. And that's because I don't want any compression forming when we need to turn the engine later. For example, when we're setting the timing or we're setting the tappets or anything like that. In fact, when it comes to do those jobs, I may even pop them out again. But uh, for now, they're just in there to keep any dirt and or moisture out of the engine. Okay, these don't have to be massively tight. It's just tight enough to seal, basically. And... Uh, there we go, that's that job done. Okay, the next and probably the last one for today, we're going to put the uh, filter, the oil filter housing back on and, and indeed put the filter in. Um, so you may recall, if you watch my video where we cleaned this up and, and basically serviced it, you may recall that we had two washers um, that were um, broken and, and a bit manky. So I've made these two. I'll take you over to the workbench in a minute and show you what we, how we did that. Um, but basically you've got this big one which fits underneath here and then you've got this one that sits on behind this plate. 
Now, this one may have, I suspect, may have been added to this tractor retrospectively um, when perhaps somebody tried to fit a, a, a different filter. That's the indication I'm being given. Um, but we'll see when we come to put it in whether um, whether that's the case or not. What I, what I, what somebody has surmised is that the filter cartridge that somebody was trying to fit was maybe just a little bit too shorter than the than the original, and they basically made that as a uh, as a as a uh, filler or a, a gap um, filler um, because I don't believe that that's actually standard. So where that was was right down the bottom of the um, filter uh, housing. Um, there is a plate that's very similar to this one there at the moment, and it's held in by a spring clip. I'm not going to mess with that because I've got no way of putting that, getting that back in again. So I don't want to take it out. Um, but if you can imagine, that's the plate at the bottom. This was sitting on top, and then the filter cartridge was sitting on top of that again. And um, I don't believe that that is standard. Um, so I suspect somebody might maybe put some packing in there um, to to take up some space. So we'll see how it fits with and without it, um, and we'll see where we go from there. Um, parts that we're using in this um, uh, video, obviously we've got the gasket out of the bottom end uh, gasket set, which is um, Anglo A4349 is the um, part number for the bottom gasket set for this engine. Um, so obviously that, that goes on there, and we'll, we'll show you how we do that. And then we've got the filter element um, which is 26560 sorry wrong number a6363 um, and that that should have the seals in it as well that that basically seal uh, around the the canister so first job is to get this onto the tractor get the filter housing on get the gasket on and all of that and then we'll move on to putting the gasket in uh, sorry the filter in and uh, tightening that up so we'll take you over to the bench and show you how we made these first. Uh, we had to make some, some cutters on the lathe, um, so we'll just show you those. And then we'll move on to um, installing the filter housing. Okay, so Oscar came down and helped me with this lot. Um, you can see we've made a range of um, different cutters here. And um, Oscar's going to tell you about his one that he found. So Oscar, can you show us which, so you found this piece in the, yeah. in a box and... Then we basically um, flattened these out because they were all bent and then we just sharpened that face and then pressed it through there mm. to make, I think, mm, I don't know. I don't, I well it made the, it yeah. made the internal diameter for one of the the rings, the, one of the gaskets, didn't it? Yeah. You can see as well, we had a couple of failed um, attempts. So this one broke. Um, it was also obviously a little bit off center and a bit too too fat. So we this had one to. Was also off center. That one's also off center. Yeah. So we had a couple of failed attempts. Um, Oscar, you also found this. So what was this? Do you know? Do you remember? Yeah. This was this in the, around a bearing. Yeah, that was um, in the wheel hub on the international tractor, which we replaced. So this is a, mm. it's a um, seal retaining ring. Um, so we've obviously replaced that at some point. We've actually got two of these. Um, and what we had to do there is this uh, had a lip on it. So we used the lathe and we just basically opened that lip up and that made the diameter that we needed for the large um, uh, um, spacer thing that, that we showed you in the, in the earlier part of the video. Yeah. The other thing and the reason I've showed you like this is when obviously when we were making that we needed to try to get the holes more centralized what, what I did so I made this one which does the center hole um, on that larger ring and um, what I did is I used these nuts basically in there so I pressed out the big one and then I just use these nuts, I can't show you now, I've got the camera in my hand, but basically just um, two nuts like that until it pretty much lined up in the center. I had to fiddle with it a lot to get it to actually, uh, no, three doesn't work unfortunately. Um, 
But anyway, the point is I used that sort of method to get to try to get that hole as in the center as possible. It's still not 100% perfect, but it was a heck of a lot better than some of these failed attempts, as you can yeah. see. So you can see we've used a few sockets, some old sockets, um, to make these cutters as well. Just put those in the lathe and turn them down to um, to get to the diameter we needed. There's two of them here. These are old sockets. I don't mind uh, messing them up. They were they're, they're old cheap sockets. You can see this one's very rusty. Um, these are. I, I went to an auction a few years ago and I bought boxes of different tools and and these were just in there. I've got plenty of um, decent sockets. I don't need these so. They work really well for this kind of a, this kind of job because they're obviously nice and round and they're also quite strong. So, okay, so that's how we made the cutters um, and how we made the gasket. This this material it's a well I can't remember the thickness now, but I think it was about four mil. It's a fiber board, um, which seemed to be the closest thing I could find to what was in there before and um so i bought that and that's what we've used but um right let's go over and fit the uh, filter housing okay as you can see we've turned the engine over on its side now so that we can work easily on on this um section here i'm going to zoom in and uh, get you properly in the frame but i just wanted to show you how we've got the engine sitting at the moment okay so the first thing we need to do oscar come is um, get some grease on here. So just put grease on the um, on the gasket. I think just put grease on your fingers and do that. Okay. Like that. That that should get it nice and greased up. I'll go get the housing in the meantime. Okay, that'll do. Right. So that goes. Well, it can really only go one way. It's pretty obvious when you when you come to do it, and um, and then the housing goes on. Now the housing, be be can be cautious. You've got two, uh, three different length of bolts. There's a long one at the back here, a medium one there, and then two shorter ones here, at the at the top. But basically, that goes down on there. We line up the holes. Get everything started. Okay, and you just want to nip those up reasonably tight. You don't want any oil leaks. There we go. Right, now we can put the filter on. The okay. So first of all, let's open this um, filter and see what we've got inside. Um, okay. So remember this is A63693. So we've got obviously the cat the um element as they call it. And um what that has is it's got let's get it out of the plastic. It's got rubber uh well it actually looks like fiber, it used to be rubber, um like a, a gasket material on both sides. So it seals top and bottom, basically. And if I'm not mistaken, the oil comes in on the outside and then 
exits through the top, if I'm not mistaken. I stand to be corrected on that. But basically, that fits on there. You remember we've got that plate and that seals on there. And then at the bottom, you've got the plate at the bottom of the um, canister, and it's basically the same. Right, let's have a look what's in the um, what they've given us in terms of seals. I'm not sure where that goes. That's certainly not for this tractor. So that's probably for another tractor that this filter fits on. And then they've given us three seals. Now. I'm going to bring the camera around in a minute, but basically there's a big seal that goes around um, and that this um, canister seals onto. So that's probably, it looks like that might be that one. And then there's two others. I suspect those are probably for different tractors, but I, I believe this is probably the one we're going to need. It's certainly wider walled, uh, which is what we need. Right, we're going to reposition the camera because um, we're going to be working on this section here now. Perhaps we should have done this before we put the um, housing on, but anyway, we'll do it this way. Uh, yeah, so we'll do that and we'll come back. Okay, completely different angle now, but hopefully a much better one for you. So we're obviously looking at the bottom of the filter housing now. Um, first job really is uh, is to get these these um, or the gasket in um, the rubber seal. Now, like I say. They've given us three. This one's the fattest, so the fattest wall thickness. Um, best thing to do, grab the pick, Oscar, is um, put it in one side, hold it, and then go on. Grab it with a pick, and uh, no, from one side, Oscar. From one, pick one of my fingers. Okay. Put it under, and just run it around. There you go. And then just make sure that it's not twisted as it's gone on, which that looks fine. Okay. Yep. Now to test, we'll just make sure. Yeah, that feels like it's going to make a good seal there, so that's good. Right now, as you oh sorry, the next thing we need to do is put these. Um, these bits back on here. Now this is a little bit tight but it does go over. So this is the little washer that we made Yeah. and then there's this um, metal washer that goes on mm. and then there's a metal clip, a wire clip mm. and uh, that's what helps the top of the, seal the top of the, the, um, the element there you go. So that's that's in. So that basically goes in there and it seals up against that conical washer like that. Now, what we'll, what I want to see is sorry, that actually goes. That doesn't make a whole bunch of sense, does it? Are you sure that can go on first? Yeah, I think you might be right. I think that goes underneath. I need to go and have a look at the manual. Give me a minute. Okay, I've just um, gone to check the manual. And uh, yeah, this is completely wrong. Basically, that conical washer goes on first and it needs to be flipped over. Then the f what they call a felt washer. And then this plate sits behind that spring. Uh, the spring clip. So yeah, I'm going to take it off and we'll start again. Okay, uh, so what I've decided to do was also just to try and make this washer a little bit more conical. Um, so that's now a little bit more consistent or uh, yeah, consistent all the way around. So that goes on first and then the uh, felt as they call it. Then we put the um, this plate on, and that's good. we're going to struggle to get that clip on there because that's now a little bit bigger, a little bit fatter than it should be. No, no, no! Mm -hmm. Just bring me that little hammer, please, Oscar. Uh, 
Actually, it's on. It's uh, yeah. Try put that ring on. Now. Okay. Just needed to be lined up. Put the split at the top so you can see what's going on. Work away from the split, not to the work all the way around one way. Yeah. There we go. That's okay. and that's clipped in and it's nice and tight, which is good. Which is good. Okay. Excellent. Right, take that away. Too much stuff here. Right now, basically, that filter, can, the uh, element now, rides up against that, and then we've got a similar um, big disc in the bottom there. Now, what I want to see is whether we need. Oh, that's interesting. How you? Sp oh. We don't need another spacer in there because that is. There's a lot of spring tension on that already, so I'm not going to bother putting this big one in the bottom. That's um, definitely not required. You can see if I, um, hopefully, I don't know if you can see this on the camera, but there's, let me measure that, that's uh, a quarter of an inch opening here. I mean, I can literally put my finger in there. So um, we definitely don't need yeah. any more spaces in there. Right. So the way this works, um, as I say, obviously you pop that in. You've got this big bolt that runs all the way down from the top and um, screws into into the end. Is that maybe an inch? I'm not really with inches. Is that maybe three quarters of an inch? What's that? What? That. Yeah, that's about three quarters of an inch. Okay. Now you do have to find the hole, um, but it does eventually go. Okay, I decided just to go and clean up the head of this bolt a little bit. It was um, terribly rounded. Um, what in the end I actually had to take it down a size to get some flat faces on there. But um, anyway, that should be fine. Now what we'll do is we'll get that lined up, get that into the um, bottom of the can. And that should start tightening up now. Mm. Oh. That's now a half inch. No, it's now a 19.32nd. Okay. It was an 11.16. Okay. And the other way to do it is to turn the canister, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's. Uh, it's touching on the back, on the bottom here. Pick it up. Oh, okay. Although that's turning the the filter as well, which isn't probably a good idea. So let's just keep going. With this, especially as you come up to this rubber seal, you don't want to be twisting that. Should have put some oil on that actually. Sorry, just grab the oil can for me, please, Austin. Let's just take this back a bit. So what we want to do is just put a little bit of oil in inside there to get all around that rubber seal that we put on there. So if you sweat. Keep going. Keep going. It's an oil filter, it doesn't mind oil. <laughs> okay, that should do. Right, and we can tighten this up. It's 
quite a long thread on that bolt, but um, you'll get there eventually. And there we go, it's going in now, and it's just about tight. And that canister won't move anymore, that's how tight it's getting. We don't want to over tighten it because you, if you over squash the, um, the rubber ring, it uh, it deforms and it doesn't seal properly so so there we go that's the oil filter on um, and ready to roll now what you'd normally do if we were just about to kind of start up we, we, we would actually fill that canister we'd have the engine standing up properly and we would fill it to about sort of that level because of course this would be this is at an angle to the ground um, just to try and get some oil in there um, and reduce the amount of air that's in there but um, obviously that's not going to help us now when we, where the engine's going to be still standing for a, for a number of months so um, I didn't see the point I don't want old stale oil in sitting in there anyway um, look that's it for now I think that's as far as we're going to go I think now that the next job is probably I need you to review but I think the next job is probably going to be to lift the engine off with a crane uh, take it off of the engine stand and then we'll start working on the the clutch and the flywheel um, get that all set up properly uh, and then I think we will move to putting it all back into the back into the engine so um, exciting times so anyway um, look that's it for today's video thanks for joining us um, we hope that you all have a good week and of course we'll catch you on the next one so cheers for now bye